Righto, Toyota champs. Now, my do not buy the MacBook Air, the new MacBook Air video was so well received. Everybody loved it. Yes. So let's do another one. Let's do a follow up on that. And I'm going to tell you why. I think it's just stupid to actually buy that model. Oh, well, not stupid. But anyway, I have a deal for you guys. If you're stuck with Windows Home and you want to get Windows Pro, or you just want cheap office keys, gaming keys, or gift card vouchers, head on down to 09, look in the description for the links and a discount code to get even more of a discount. Hey, but have a look at this. 35 US dollars difference between a 13 inch MacBook Air and a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Pro. Now I will say it's supposed to be 100 US dollars. This is like 35 US dollars, 50 Australian dollars. Like that is amazing. I'll tell you why this is a lot better. I'll go through all the processes in a minute. All right, all the different processes on them. Have a look at this. The only downside to buying the MacBook Pro 13 inch is cost 35 US dollars in this case, more expensive, $100 if you're in the US. I don't know why. I can tell you why actually. This has been done at Australia's new exchange rate. This price was set with when the exchange rate was better in Australia. Now this can change. Like seriously, I've seen it overnight. They could change the price of this. So why you can, especially if you're in Australia, why would you pay $849 for the MacBook Air? And I'll show you the differences now. When you can spend $50 more and buy this much better computer. The only downside here is, you know, the weight. It's 125 grams or like 2.75 pounds versus three pounds. So there's not that much difference. 125 grams is like one of those lint chocolate bars. I mean, if it was a tablet, you would feel that in your hand holding it up. But if it's in your backpack or something like that, 125 grams is, I don't think it's going to make that much difference. Although this MacBook Pro is thinner, as you'll see here. So let's go through the differences. Now, some people say, oh, you don't need all the power of the MacBook Pro, whatever. Well, it is. It'll be up to 40% faster. So that's straight off the bat there. Much more powerful. Iris graphics too. Much more powerful than these Ultra HD graphics. It's around 25% or something like that between Iris and Ultra HD. Actually, these are probably, it's probably more because um, these Ultra HD ones in the Y processors, they're not very good. Resolution's the same, but have a look at that brightness over 60% more brighter professional grade monitor on this MacBook Pro 100% P3 color gamut there DCI P3 versus full standard sRGB so that's 100% sRGB it's nowhere near as wide a color gamut as this this is 60% brighter 40% faster. You get what I'm saying here? It's a much better computer. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you don't need that and that the MacBook Air is fanless. Well, I've read that it's not fanless. So I don't know why it's not fanless. Say, for example, the Surface Pro 6. I reviewed that. That has an i5, 15 watt part that can boost up to like 20 watts or whatever. Doesn't throttle. It's thinner and lighter than the MacBook. I'm talking the MacBook, okay? Which is like a pound lighter than the MacBook Pro. Doesn't throttle, full performance, quad core so i don't know why you have a 7 watt cpu in the macbook air and it needs a fan that just doesn't make sense to me so you can't even say that yeah get a macbook air and it's going to be quieter it's not going to be quieter it's got a fan that was on apple insider so if that's true that really takes away one of the main reasons why you would buy it i think some people might want to go for the old macbook air because the old macbook air i'll give you five reasons why you might go of the old macbook air all right it's got the bezel it doesn't look that good but five reasons you would want to go of it one it's cheaper it's much cheaper it's like $200 cheaper, isn't it? Or something like that in the US. <laughs> so it's much more affordable. Two, better keyboard. Of a magnitude better keyboard. These are the classic Mac keyboards. These were the best, all right? Unbelievable keyboard. Three, MagSafe. I love MagSafe. I don't know why they got rid of it. I oh, know USB-C, yeah, you can have... Why not have MagSafe and USB-C? Like, I love that thing. I have actually yanked on my USB-C cord and it's actually loose on my MacBook Pro, which I have returned, by the way. That's another story coming up. Reason number four, you have ports. You have USB microphone, dual mic. You have an SD card reader. How good is that? You have an SD card reader and two USB 3. So, and number five, we've seen the benchmarks of the new MacBook Air and they're not really that much faster. So you're not losing any performance. And this is like fifth generation, fifth generation. And now you're on the eighth generation. So even though this is 
fifth generation CPU, the new one that's going in the MacBook Air, the new MacBook Air, the i5-821Y. This is eighth generation. And yes, it's only a seven watt part, which I thought it was a five watt, but it's actually a seven watt because usually the i5 is five watt. But even though it is eighth generation, it's only just barely faster than the old fifth generation MacBook Air processor. And that's why Apple never said anything about it being faster because really it's not that much faster if, if it's faster at all. Five reasons why you might buy the old one. The only bad thing is the screen. I mean, that's the only thing. I wish they would just put a retina display on the old model and yeah, I would love it. Um, anyway, so that's the processor here. It is a seven watt. This is for the MacBook Air compared to say, for example, what you can get in the MacBook Pro. This is a much better part. 15 watt iris graphics. It is a much better part. In actual fact, if you want a MacBook Air, you might as well just get the MacBook because the MacBook is like heaps lighter, thinner, and the performance, well, right, more or less the same. Actually, the i7 in the MacBook is faster than the MacBook Air. And this is the MacBook processor here. This is a seven watt part here. As you can see, seven watts. And this is actually faster than the processor that's in the MacBook Air. And how a brand new MacBook Air coming out in 2018 is actually not really that much faster than this is just mind boggling. And you might say, oh, why is a student need a MacBook Pro? And I'll just put one thing here. 500 nits of brightness, professional grade monitor, okay? When you're in the library next to a window or whatever, you're out in the cafe or whatever, 500 nits brightness versus 300 nits. This is the biggest reason to get this. This display is much brighter and it's much more powerful. But even if you're not going to use the power, you still get a brighter display. And yeah, for example, people at Vic Uni, they don't go near the windows because they're worried about the display not being bright enough. With this, no problem. 500 nits, you'll be able to nearly see it outdoors. So I think that was lost in all of these. If you need the ultralight laptop, yeah, buy the MacBook. But the MacBook Air is in no man's land. It's nearly as expensive as the MacBook Pro. It's only slightly lighter, but it's less powerful than the MacBook. It's just a strange product. And I'm going to be totally honest with you here. Those core wide processors can get bogged down with a few Chrome tabs. Believe me, if you want to multitask with them, they don't like to multitask. If you've got lots of apps open, you're using Chrome, you're on Pornhub, it's just going to kill your machine. It'll just bog down to a crawl. So I can't recommend anything with a wide processor. I don't know why at this, like especially if in Australia, this is just insane here in Australia. You know, we're talking $50. Why would you, you would have to have a chromosome missing to buy the MacBook Air. So anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think. I think the MacBook Pro is the better bet out of all these. And the only reason I'll get the MacBook is if I just need ultra thin, ultra light. Otherwise, the MacBook Air with the MacBook Pro just doesn't make sense to buy the MacBook Air. Anyway, tell you.